But honestly, these camps, Auschwitz, Treblinka, and others were probably forced labor camps, not death camps or execution camps. <laughs> They're probably, uh, probably, I mean, he's really sure of himself there. They're probably just forced labor camps, not death camps, you know. And, and we're actually going to see later on, he says that they actually were having fun. The Jews had good memories from these labor camps. You're actually going to see it. Okay, I mean, and you're going to see a lie that he says coming up here. And I mean, I literally, when I was watching it, it literally took my breath away. It was literally just like, I went, like, oh, I can't believe he just said that. You're not going to believe some of this stuff. Let's keep watching. Why would you put a tattoo on somebody that you're about to cremate? You know, why would you issue them an ID card? Okay, now another one of the points that he brings up is, okay, if they're being just brought in, the Jews are being brought in to be exterminated, why put tattoos, numbers on them. Why number them? Why give them ID cards? Uh, it's called genocide, all right? And if you study it, the first computers over there, the IBM computer company, was making, they were making lists of these Jews for extermination, all right? You put IDs on people and give people numbers so that you can exterminate them and keep a good record of who gets exterminated. That's what was going on. So again, it's a stupid argument that Steven Anderson has there. Well, you know, if they, if they were really being exterminated, why number them? Because that's the nature of genocide. But let's continue. And help you to understand that the goal of the Nazis, the goal of Adolf Hitler, his stated goal was that he wanted the Jews out of Germany. It's no question that he hated Jews, that he was anti-Jew. Nobody's doubting that. He wanted the Jews out of Europe. And so he, he basically had a lot of programs to try to get the Jews. Now, he persecuted the Jews also because he wants to make their life miserable because he wants them to leave. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that that's right, but he basically made their lives miserable and he also tried to offer them incentives to emigrate somewhere else. His goal is to get them out of Germany. Now, who else had that same goal of getting the Jews to leave Germany? Well, that would be the Zionists. Because the goal of the Zionists was to get the Jews to go to Palestine and to form the nation of Israel. Yes, you really did hear that correct. Um, those of us who support the creation of the nation of Israel and the, the Jews being able to go back to their homeland, we are the Nazis. Uh, so, you know, again, a little Jesuitical spinning here. So take the, take the guilt off of the Vatican and off of those who deny the Holocaust and put it over on those who support the modern-day nation of Israel. If you support the modern-day nation of Israel, well, then you're trying to get the Jews out of different lands where they could be and things. So you're, you're the same as what Adolf Hitler did. Don't you see the logic behind that? Yeah, if you're about half crazy, you know, or possessed with devils like Andersnake. But let's continue here. So therefore, the Zionists wanted them to move. Who else wanted them to move? The Nazis want them to leave. That's why from 1933 to 1938, believe it or not, the Zionists and the Nazis were working together. I mean, this is just openly known. In fact, here's a coin that was made to commemorate the partnership between the Zionists and the Nazis. It has the so-called Star of David on one side, and then it has the swastika on the other side because of the fact that they both have the same goal. The Zionists want the Jews in Palestine and the Germans want the Jews, you know, to go anywhere except Germany and that includes Palestine. Okay, now he leaves a lot of facts out concerning this medallion. This medallion was done as a commemoration uh, where a Nazi officer, an SS officer, went to the land of Palestine looking over where these Jews could be sent. Okay, that is true. And there were, there were people that were trying to get the Jews out of there. But again, if, if the two goals were mutually, you know, working together and things like this, uh, wouldn't they have just kept working on trying to get the Jews to move instead of just rounding them up and exterminating them? Um, if you have somebody who's into Zionism, you know, getting the Jews to return to their homeland, they're not going to be for exterminating the Jews. How can you resettle Palestine? You know, Israel is the real name. It's not Palestine. You know, how can you resettle Israel, the ancient land of Israel? How can you resettle it if you are for the slaughter of your own people? 
So again, this this just he's he's such a liar. It's it's just insane. But let's continue. But not only that, but those emaciated corpses that they show you, that doesn't prove the Holocaust because the story of the Holocaust is that the Jews were just rounded up and brought straight to a death camp and straight to their death. Well, then why would they look skinny and emaciated? It takes months to get that skinny and emaciated. Do you see him laugh again? It takes months to see him get that. He's laughing about those horrible pictures, pictures that can give you nightmares, looking at the different photographs and things of the dead corpses and stuff like that. Oh, but why were they so skinny and everything else? Uh, because you can't kill them all in one day. You bring them into the, into the camps and you, and you do use them for labor you know, and things like that, but you let them slowly starve to death so that there's less to, to expose of, you know, or dispose of, excuse me, dispose of. You know, there's, I mean, that's just logic. Okay, and, and oh, they just were working hard and some of them just kind of got hungry and things. It's, he's going to say it's here in a little bit, oh, the, you know, there, it was a war, so people were starving on all sides and everything else, you know. Let's continue. You know, you don't get that way overnight. That proves that people were starving to death. If you look at emaciated images, that's people that were starving. But you can find pictures of that of Americans in World War II, Germans in World War II, Jews in World War II. Why? Because in war, a lot of times the supply lines are being cut off and a lot of people are starving to death. So you're going to have pictures of emaciated people. That doesn't prove that this story about the Holocaust, per se, and the six million is true. He's just absolutely disgusting. So, you know, there's lots of pictures out there of American, you know, civilians and Germans and things like that. And they're all just real skinny like the people that were in the death camps. He's a sick individual. Let's continue. You say, what about all the thousands and thousands of eyewitnesses? What about that? Well, here's the thing about that. Are there thousands and thousands of Holocaust survivors? Yeah, but all it means to be a Holocaust survivor is just that you lived there at the time that this was going on. And a lot of these people can witness to the fact of being rounded up because it happened. A lot of these people can witness to the fact of, you know, being sent to a, a labor camp because it really happened. A lot of people will tell you about going to Auschwitz and playing on the soccer team and acting in musicals and plays and spending the camp currency at the, at the commissary and things like that. Okay, I just got to pause it there for a minute. Can you talk about disgusting? A lot of the Holocaust survivors, they'll, they'll remember the good times, the dances that they went to and playing soccer and things and spending the money and stuff like this. You know, it's just they had some really good times. Now listen to what he says coming up here. This is the part that took my breath away when I first heard it. But are there thousands and thousands of witnesses that will testify to seeing gas chambers and people being cremated? No, it's actually very few witnesses that can testify to that. And you say, well, what about those witnesses? Well, they're lying. It's that simple. It they're lying. People that were there that went through it, they lied. Corey Ten Boom was a liar. This man right here, Dr. Ben David Liu, Holocaust survivor, he was a liar too. You know, Jewish rabbi converted to Jesus Christ, got saved. You know, he was a liar. It's just a total liar. You know, he didn't see anything bad happening. It was all just soccer games and, and, and acting productions and having a good time in those, in those forced labor camps. You know? I mean, the fact that he was in a train car and, and dumped out into a field with all, a whole bunch of dead bodies and the German soldiers were coming through with bayonets and sticking them, making sure that they were dead and, and they took a break and he escaped as a result, that was all just fake. That was all a lie. Just, you know, personal testimony of a man and his whole family was slaughtered because they were Jewish. And, and uh, that's all just lies. That's all according to Steven Anderson. I mean, this little punk that he is, and yet he knows more than eyewitnesses. Those eyewitnesses are just liars. They're all of them. Yeah. Well, if you want to hear actually this uh, story of Ben David Liu, uh, you can get this from the uh, Bible Baptist bookstore right down there. Try to get that. There you go. You can get that MP3 uh, CD there. Or you can actually go to YouTube. Here on YouTube, actually, you can type in Ben David Liu, uh, L-E-W there, Ben David Liu. And right there you have Dave Flang, um, 
really, really good channel. I highly recommend Brother Dave's channel. He's got a lot of stuff on there. But uh, Dr. Ben, or De he's got the name wrong. Dr. Ben David Liu, Holocaust survivor there. And you can listen to his testimony of what he went through. All right. An eyewitness. And a saved man. So don't tell me, oh, he's part of a Jewish conspiracy or something like this. He's a saved man. So absolutely ridiculous what Andrew Snake just said there. But uh, we'll continue here. We have a couple more to go and then we're done. That the people who deny the Christ, they deny that Jesus is the Messiah, would lie to you about something else. Doesn't the Bible say, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Messiah? He's Antichrist? <laughs> uh, Anderson, you just failed your own test. Uh, the verse says, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? And I saw one of you put in one of the comments on one of the things that was kind of funny. You know, he'll say uh, that they're Antichrist because they, they say that uh, they deny that Jesus is the Messiah. Well, if you're going to change Christ to Messiah, then why don't you say, instead of Antichrist, say Anti-Messiah? <laughs> but it's kind of funny because he literally changes the text of the King James Bible. The King James Bible says Christ, not Messiah. You say, well, that means the same thing. It means the same thing. Okay, but the term is Christ in your King James Bible. And when Jesus Christ warned of of false Christs coming and things like that. He's warning about numbers of groups where people are calling themselves Christ, not Messiah, uh, including the Catholic priests who basically call themselves other Christs. And they do according to the catechism. I have that in other studies. So this whole, this whole thing, Anderson is clearly right in front of the whole world changing the King James Bible, the text of the King James Bible, and proving that he has the spirit of Antichrist. He has a false satanic spirit within him. Just incredible. But let's continue. We'll watch another one here. Frankly, they're lying if they tell these stories that don't mathematically even add up. So there aren't thousands of eyewitnesses to the things that we're talking about here. There are a handful of paid liars that will witness to some of these things that just frankly don't make any sense. So again, he's discrediting the eyewitness accounts of thousands of people that have been there, that were there for the Holocaust, Holocaust survivors, and he just, oh, they're, they're all just lying, or else they were paid. Like he knows. He's talked to every single one of them. Kind of like the way he judges all of Judaism, you know, modern day Judaism, by interviewing four rabbis. You know, I mean, he would cry foul if Christianity was judged by somebody interviewing four Christian, quote-unquote, Christian preachers. But it's okay for him to do the same to the Jews. Sure, sure, right. Let's continue.